So I am walking into Mexico right now. Yes! <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe we got in. This is one of the most bizarre travel experiences we've ever had. That is the United States. That is Mexico. I was a little worried about how long lunch took, but not a whole lot going on in this town. <laughs> Buenos dias, travelers. I'm jo I'm Justin. I'm Jess, and welcome to Big Bend National Park. We just were treated to the most spectacular sunrise right here in the Chihuahua Desert. We're on the west side of Texas, right along the Mexico border. Like so many RVers, Jessica and I love chasing national parks, and wow, Big Bend has absolutely blown our expectations out of the water. It is so beautiful. We just arrived here after two weeks in Guatemala. Be sure to check out our recent video from there. And it was kind of a busy trip, so it's been so nice to relax here, but honestly, we're kind of missing Latin America. And fortunately for us, Big Bend National Park, it's known for something especially unique. It's the only national park where you can literally walk from the park's borders into Mexico. Well, it does depend upon the height of the Rio Grande. Today, I suspect we're actually gonna be taking a rowboat across instead of walking. But once we're there, we'll get to a tiny town called Boquilla del Carmen. There's a few restaurants there, a bar, some souvenir shops, maybe even some hot springs. So we're gonna be exploring all that and taking you along with us. Adios, adios. <laughs> what is it called? No, no, it's not adios. What is it? How do you say, like, what is Speedy Gonzalez says? Arriba. Arriba, that's what it is. That's, that's, let's go. Arriba. <laughs> we are on our way to Big Bend, and there is a burro. Oh, and he's coming. Oh, oh, oh. Hi, baby. Oh, oh, oh my god, you got carrots. I don't have any carrots for you, but I do have love. <gasps> That's so cool. It's like a wildlife safari. Yeah. Bye. Bye, baby. We're about 15 minutes away from the Boquillas Port of Entry, but I did want to note one important thing. It's not open every single day, and unfortunately, we learned that the hard way. We drove all the way here yesterday, which was a Tuesday, and it's only open during the winter hours, Wednesday through Sunday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. In the summer, there's even more limited hours, which is Friday through Monday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. If you're not back in the country by 4 p.m., you are not getting back in until the following day, which means you're going to have to spend the night in Boquillas. Well, and I guess if you are in Boquillas past 4 p.m. on Sunday, you're gonna be spending at least two or maybe even three nights there, so don't make that mistake. Unless you wanna have a little Mexico getaway. We have been carrying around this massive box of recycling for like a thousand miles now, and it is surprisingly difficult to, impossible to recycle in Southern America. And here in Big Bend, they have this uh, sorting facility. So Jessica and I are extremely excited to be recycling. Bokeas Crossing. Uh-oh. So we just drove past the Bokeas Crossing entry and we were waved forward by this border crossing garden. So I don't know if they're closed or what, but we're gonna find out. Howdy. Are y'all closed for the day? Oh, it's full. Oh, so just check back in a little bit. Are we able to park in an overflow and walk in? Oh, it's full. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. So they told us the overflow lot was full, but we saw some people walking out of the Boquillas Crossing back towards the overflow lot. So we're gonna go see if maybe there's some availability. Wish us luck. So we've kept circling around the parking lot for the Boquillas port of entry, um, but it's all full. We keep seeing cars leave and we just went up and asked the border patrol agent. He said that at 12.15, he's going to let in as many cars as have left in the parking lot. So we have three minutes and counting. We are about a hundred yards away and uh, we are hoping to snag one of those spots. Okay, it's quarter after. He said quarter after, right? He said yeah, quarter after? He did say it's quarter. quarter after. Are you gonna let us in? Yes! Okay, come on. Great. Yes! Awesome. 
you so much. <laughs> oh my God, I can't believe we got in. Wow. Yeah, that uh, an agent pulled up to where we were parked on the side of the road and said that we couldn't sit there like 30 seconds before he started letting cars in. I'm like, oh my God. And then two cars pulled in front of us, which gave us just enough time. I cannot believe we're getting in. Wow, this is so chaotic. They let in all these cars and all the cars trying to leave or crossing each other at the same time. Yeah, they definitely need more parking spots at a minimum. But again, number one rule, definitely get here early if you wanna go over to Mexico. We finally parked. We're not to the parking lot yet, but at least we got into the parking area and hopefully we'll be able to cross the border. If you've watched either of our two videos where we've picked up our last two trailers in Canada, you know that we have had an interesting history crossing borders. Now they are the US-Canada borders. Those Canadian border crossing guards are actually more ruthless than, yeah. But uh, anyway, I'm really glad that we don't have our trailer with us today. Uh, and hopefully it'll be easier crossing on foot anyway. Mexico's always been pretty easy peasy for us. No fruits and vegetables, no meat products, no live animals. If you ride a burro, leave it on that side of the border, please. But anything you cannot collect in our national park, you cannot collect in theirs. So don't bring back anything like rocks, minerals, fossils, plant and animal parts. We close at four o'clock. It's gonna be really busy. There's a lot of people over there. And they're all trying to come back before we close. So think about that. We gotta get your process through here. Your passports will be checked. They'll check bags, that type of thing. You see a big mob of people, Maybe jump in front of them <laughs> or wait a little bit, but just don't, you don't want to spend the night over there unless you want to, then you can. So we just made it through the U.S. border crossing station on our way into Mexico, but I don't think we're officially in Mexico yet. And it was really pretty informal. They just make sure you have a passport. I did see them not let one couple through because the dad's passport was expired. And I think they just kind of do this pre-check because they don't want there to be a situation where you're trying to come back into the U.S. later on in the evening and you don't have the information that you need to cross into Mexico and back. Oh wow, I wanted to just walk across. So right now we're walking to the Rio Grande where we can actually see it right now and it looks kind of low. I don't actually know that we'll need a rowboat, but if you do need a rowboat, it is $5 per person for a round trip. Yeah, and I'm curious to see if we're gonna have to do an actual border crossing with the Mexican border crossing agents there. Wow, the Rio Grande is really, really short. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, we do have our Tevas on. I don't know, do you wanna brave it? I think so. Yeah. Okay, and we might be walking into Mexico today. That'll be interesting. The original plan was to take one of these boats, but Jess and I just noticed that they are literally walking you across while you're in the boat. So I think our new plan is we're gonna just walk across. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. So I am walking into Mexico right now. To be honest, the Rio Grande feels so nice. Wow, oh my gosh. It's like a warm pool. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I cannot believe we are crossing into Mexico by foot from the United States. This is so bizarre. Yeah, we're literally standing in the Rio Grande. It's low enough and the water feels absolutely incredible. The temperature out is maybe like 85 degrees and the water just feels like pool water. Yeah, I can't really imagine nice. a nicer way to cross into Mexico. If you're heading to Big Bend when the Rio Grande is on the lower side and you wanna be able to walk across the river too, you might wanna consider wearing hiking sandals like our trusty Tevas. Okay, you ready to go into Mexico? Let's do it. All right, I'll meet you there. Yay! Welcome to Mexico. If crossing the river into another country wasn't weird enough, having your tripod in the middle of said river makes it that much weirder. I just wanna my number when I keep staring at you. Once you are officially in Mexico, it's a 0.65 mile distance to Boquillas del Carmen. You can either ride a truck, a mule, or walk, which is the option that we're gonna do. I don't know if you can see the people riding donkeys behind us, but you can literally walk there faster <laughs> than the donkeys are riding. And it's only about a 
I don't know, like a 15 minute walk on flat ground, so. Though Key is still Carmen exclusively relies on tourism dollars, so absolutely come here, spend money. But if I were you, I would spend it on tacos and margaritas. The U.S. border agent said that the line can get pretty long at about four when you have to cross back. So he recommended being back by 3.30. And we are walking the point six six miles into Boquillas from the river crossing, which means we've only got about two hours to really check out the town, not including our walk back and forth. So we're gonna try to hurry as quickly as we can and get some margaritas. I've read online that you are generally supposed to check in with some kind of Mexican border agent and they charge you either two or three dollars. However, when we crossed over the river, there wasn't anybody to take our money, um, so I guess have two to three dollars ready per person. Um, but if they're not here, I think it's okay to just carry on. So I think we've officially made it to the main drag and there's not much going on, but there are a couple of restaurants. I think you got two restaurants and a bunch of different souvenir shops, but I will walk across the Rio Grande if it means authentic margaritas and tacos. Well, let's stop tacoing about it <laughs> and get in there. So while we're waiting for food, we thought it would be a good time to tell you a little about the history of Boquillas del Carmen. This used to be an old mining town in the 1800s, but unfortunately by the early 19th century, the mining town had went bust and this town originally had up to 2,000 people, which is now dwindled down to 200. It's believed in the 1930s that there was a push to make Boquillas del Carmen part of a huge international park between Big Bend and the town, um, but unfortunately that never came to fruition. However, this town now has become kind of integrated into Big Bend with over 10,000 visitors per year crossing over the river, just like we did. The town pretty much solely exists on tourism, and the prices here are pretty expensive. Margaritas at this restaurant are eleven fifty U.S., but when in Boquillas, right? So we got some chips and salsa and tacos. We actually ordered two burritos, so they just gave us these to munch on while they remake the burritos. And it looks like the tortillas are homemade, so I'm very excited about that. So we mentioned that the margaritas are a little on the expensive side, about $12, but at least they're uh, pretty sizable. And solid. We got our burritos. They look pretty cute with homemade tortillas, so ain't nothing wrong with that. I also found a bar that we should go to after this if okay. we have time for a okay. center base on. I'm up for it. For two burritos, two margaritas, and chips and salsa, it costs $49, which is kind of expensive for Mexico, but the vibes are pretty cool, and you're right on the Rio Grande. I was a little worried about how long lunch took, but not a whole lot going on in this town, <laughs> so I think maybe let's look at some uh, trash keys. Yeah! Okay. <laughs> Roxy? Roxy. <laughs> I love the little tail wag. So cute. So it's 2.45. I think we've got like 15 minutes left. Do you want to go get a cerveza with me? Absolutely. And luckily, there's one bar in town. We always go to places like Guatemala and India and very rarely actually get any kind of souvenirs um, and it'd be fun. I like jewelry is very easy. You can just put it on and now I have a little souvenir. Uh, Cheers. So it's uh, early March, which is still squarely in the winter and it is um, extremely spicy outside like, like almost 90 degrees i'd say and uh, <laughs> sorry it's just, donkeys behind us. honestly i'm just i'm amazed that this place is even open for visiting in the summer so if you don't tolerate the heat well uh, i would just recommend saving this for uh winter activity for sure we just walked past this group of people riding a donkey and i guess it's like late in the day and the donkeys are feeling hot too and they also don't want to go back so i guess the guy who's like leading the group is mushing them along and the tourists were like we could just walk the rest of the way 
Honestly, I cannot imagine how disgusting it would feel to have a hot, hairy donkey in between my legs right now. That's what she said. <laughs> it is so hot out here. I can't believe this is March. Wow. I was thinking to put 120 out here in the summertime, and I believe it. Even hotter, honestly, if it's, it feels like it's like 90 degrees right now. Yeah. Bye, Mexico. Bye, Mexico. I'm sure we'll see you. We're seeing you later this year, actually. And hello, United States. Okay, we made it back in time. Let's hope they let us back into the country. Hi. Uh, is, is it okay it? to be filmed? No. Okay. Well, we made it back across the border. They wouldn't let us film inside, which is understandable, but you'll just have to trust us because, well, there's the American flag. It was a pretty seamless process, and we've read before that they um, just call in your kind of passport information to the Border Patrol in El Paso, um, but they really just took our passports, went behind the scenes, and then maybe 30 seconds later, we're back in the United States. It was actually kind of interesting. Jess asked the border agents how many people went to Boquillas today, and they estimated it's about 560. And they said typically it's anywhere from 60 to 600 people, depending on how busy it is. This weekend is particularly busy because it happens to be spring break, so they had a lot of people come through. It's important to note that um, besides the restaurant, souvenir shops, and bar, there is other stuff to do in Boquillas. There's hot springs, dunes, and even rafting kind of adventures, but obviously those types of things would take longer than the couple hours that we had. So if you want to go on a full-blown adventure, just make sure that you plan for a full day or even a couple days over there. And there is a hotel in Boquillas, so if you want to stay for more than one day, you're more and welcome to do that. So we're going to be in Texas for a couple more weeks, so we're still going to have plenty of adventures, so if you want to check out those, be sure to like and subscribe to this video. And until next time, we'll see you down the road. Adios! Adios.